Miriam, what are you doing here? I look up and I see that two bright eyes are studying me. I'm startled by the question and all I can say is, I'm here to grow sweet potatoes. Which was true, but I was also there to collect data for my research. Hmm, old wolf says. He turns around, grabs his bush knife, and starts walking up the hill. I don't really know what to do with myself. So I start following him, and we walk through the rainforest. Well, oh, is walking. I am literally jogging so I can keep up with him. But then he stops. Hear that? He says. Bird of paradise. Or kumul, as we say in Papua New Guinea. There used to be many of them. We'd collect their feathers to make the outfits for our traditional dancers. But not anymore. These birds, they're gone. Because now, there's only little forest left. He turns around and he starts going down the hill. At this point, I can't pretend to be either walking or jogging. I'm literally sliding down this hill. Sorry, Omu says when we get to the bottom. We used to make our gardens on nice land close to the village. But now, there are so many people, we have to go deep into the forest to find some space for our gardens. Anyway, you said you were here to grow sweet potatoes. There they are. I walk over. And I look at the sweet potato plants. But instead of seeing green, healthy leaves, I see that they're yellow and mushy. I start digging and I find some sweet potato tubers. But they're very tiny. I look at old. When I was young, these sweet potatoes used to be as big as a coconut, he says. But now they're as big as my finger. It's because of the soil. It's not good anymore. And the weather, it's confusing us. I'm hungry, Miriam. And so is my family. I look at the sweet potatoes and I realize that this is not the first time that I've seen this. Oh, turns to me and he says, Can I ask, Miriam, do people in your place still harvest good food? It depends, I say, but last year, we didn't have as many potatoes either. Our eyes meet, and always says, I don't need you to help me plant sweet potatoes, Miriam. I know how to plant them. I need you to work with me so together we can find a way to harvest big, healthy sweet potatoes again. So tell me, what can you be doing here? I think about his question. And while I do so, all of a sudden I hear a big crack. Oh, he's just chopped down the banana tree standing right next to me. He grabs the banana, swings them on his back, and he starts walking up the hill. Stand up strong, he yells after me, as if he's read my thought of how will I ever get up this hill again. Later, we all gather around the fire. Hogoli, or whose wife, is peeling the bananas, preparing dinner and she throws the banana peels over the railing of her hut. Ogoli, I ask, what happens to these banana peels? They just go down the hole, she says, and when it's full, we cover it up and we dig a new one. But as she's saying this, I see that one of her chickens is creeping up, clearly aiming to eat the banana that Ogoli has just peeled. Ogoli jumps up, grabs the banana peel, throws it at the chicken. Ah, these chickens, she says. Ogoli, what happens to this chicken? I continue asking. I just saw what happens to them, she replies. They come here, they eat my food, they get fat, they poop everywhere. And then, when it's a special day, we eat them. Do you ever bring these banana peels or this chicken poo to your garden? I wonder. Ogoli laughs. Daughter, she says. I bring many things to my garden, but why would I bring banana peels or chicken poo? They contain nutrients, I think out loud. 
Ah, I hear. I turn around and I look into Ogu's bright eyes again. Now I know you and I can do, Marianne, to have this big, healthy sweet potatoes again. And then we both smile. Thank you. <laughs>